and your presentation will be all set. That sounds great. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Good to see everyone. Um, I'd like to start off by saying I'm going to wedge a lot of information in a very short amount of time. So I'm going to just fly through this, but I have no problem if you have any questions or you want to make a comment as we go through things, just stop me because, you know, I'd love to have that interaction if, if you have a question on anything. Um, but other than that, I will attempt to share my screen here. Can you see this? Yes. Oh, great. There we go. Okay. So 2020 Visit Lebanon Valley started out with much promise and um, our, our vision was to strengthen the Lebanon Valley's economy through tourism while enhancing the quality of life and regional pride. Our focus is to remain true to our roots and work closely with our communities to encourage collaboration. And we always promote the county as a beautiful place to visit, live, work, and play. Our mission, as it was always heads in beds and overnight accommodations and getting people from out of the county to come into the county, once COVID hit, we had a, a little shift in our thinking and, you know, our residents are just as important as our visitors as far as helping the economy of the Lebanon Valley. And so we consider ourselves the storytellers and the choreographers of this experience to experience the Lebanon Valley. And our wish is to teach our communities how to fall in love with themselves again. Uh, I think sometimes, you know, we get so busy and, and worried about things we forget about all the wonderful things there are here to do. Um, our annual guide, which we put out um, usually in January every year, we, we had 100,000 copies and this was 2020. Now, because of COVID, we didn't go through as many copies as we would have normally. So um, we have extended the life of this guide to get the most money out of it and to give our advertisers in the guide the most bang for their buck. We are running that right through this year and we feel our, our copies should last up until about fall. So this summer, we're gonna start creating the new guide and it will come out in the fall. And we, we ship about 50% of these guides to distribution points throughout the, the state, triple A's, welcome centers, a high traffic zones, Philadelphia and New Jersey, we expanded our distribution into. And so we will reproduce a new guide in the fall and that will see us through 2022. So it'll be about a year and a quarter. Yes, Joellen. Yes, um, does that mean you would then increase the copies by perhaps a quarter since you're starting a quarter early and make it 125,000 so it comes out in January in 2022? Well, it'll come out in the fall of 2021 and carry us through, like you said, through 2022. And it's possible. I guess what we have to do is um, see how uh, the distribution goes. And if we want to expand our distribution, we will need more. Um, and you're right, it's a longer time period. So it all factors into the cost of the guide and, and the budget that we have allowed and uh, the cost forwarded on to our advertisers, which you know, we, we try to keep as reasonable as possible. So um, yes, that is definitely point for consideration. Thank you. Mm -hmm, of course. And then we kicked off last year, the Java journey, which is a coffee crawl throughout the Lebanon County. We created little passports here and disposable mugs. And you go and you get a special coffee drink at each one of these places that we had from Palmyra to Jonestown to Myerstown to Mount Gretna and Lebanon, of course. And um, it was a great hit. And um, this year we thought, now how are we going to do this with COVID? So we didn't do a disposable mug because we didn't want them bringing any kind of mug into the coffee shops, but we did a ceramic mug that they could take home as a gift and the passports. And we had 10 businesses participate um, so that was two more than last year. And we sold out in the first weekend of mugs. Every, every shop had a, so many mugs that you could get and passports. 
and some shops sold out in 24 hours. So um, now their task is to go from place to place and get their stamp and their passport. And then when they have their passport completed, they pull off the back card and drop it at the last coffee place. And we have a nice big basket of product, products um, from all of the coffee shops, um, beans and sweatshirts and mugs and you know, gift items. Um, and it's a nice basket. So it will be fun to see uh, reactions and see how this grows. We were pleased that um, during this time, uh, people were still interested in participating and uh, safely, of course. And, uh, you know, it generated a little interest in some of our uh, small businesses. And then, of course, you know, the storybook we came out with um, at the end of last year, beginning of uh, 2020, uh, Adventures of Lebanon and Lily, which is our pride and joy. And I couldn't be happier with this book. It was so much fun to do. MJ McFalls brought all our dreams to life with her art. And um, uh, the United Way selected our book as the Read Across America book um, for the Lebanon County. And it was read in 60 first grade classrooms. And of course, we had people coming into our office and buying the book and having lots of fun with it. So throughout the year then, um, we actually added to our, um, our meetings and we're trying to create a dialogue and an openness between our hospitality industry in the Lebanon County. I found it was interesting. There's not a lot of conversations between hoteliers and between restaurateurs unless they have an al already have a, a relationship. It was my mission to try to open this up and it was the first attempt and we had hotels represented, attractions, the cidery, uh, farmer's market, uh, history represented with Union Canal and food and beverage and the arts. And it, it, was, it was a nice meeting and afterwards everybody started talking to each other about, hey, we should work together doing this. And it was very exciting. And then of course COVID hit. So um, we have our next meeting actually next week and if via Zoom and uh, we're opening up to all hospitality and tourism professionals that would like to um, interact. And, and so we're, we're serving as the, um, the beginning point of this conversation with this industry. Um, and the next thing we did was add a new website. We totally, with the help of Fresh Creative, of course, um, we totally redid the website and it was so important to do because nowadays that's how you're known. That's the first thing people do is look at a website. So uh, we couldn't be more pleased with the end result. And of course, it's never an end result, is it? Um, we're constantly updating, we're constantly revising and, and adding things. So that's the beginning of that. And then COVID hit. And, you know, our, our plans as we were steamrolling down the road were, were diverted. Um, we were part of uh, Larry Bowman's wonderful idea of feeding the front line, purchasing meals through um, the restaurants and giving them to the first responders in the, in the health community. Um, we created a Lebanon Valley Promise. It was a very simple concept, but we asked businesses to sign it. Um, we also created uh, some fun graphics here with Lebanon and Lily and trying to keep your six feet of distance, you know, anything we could to try to forward the message. This is a video that we created for um, the beginning of COVID, and I'm going to play that now. Now is the time to understand the times we are living in and to respect one another. Now is the time for inner journeys and online adventures. Now is the time for dreaming big and planning future vacations. The valleys rich history and heritage have been around for hundreds of years and will still be here when you're ready. Whether you've been to the Lebanon Valley before or are dreaming of your first trip, we look forward to seeing you. And of course that led people right back to our website and that was through social media. Um, we also planned um, 
activities for the children to do, uh, Trivia Trail for Lebanon Lily uh, activities. And we created a family fun campaign this summer with a, a local Palmyra family, a young woman who's actually the cover of our guide, um, which was shot at the Risser Marvel Farm Market. And um, she was our cover girl, but she has three lovely children and they created our family fun campaign. And this is the next video I'd like to show you. And uh, we created one more video I'm going to show you. Um, because of the overrun of our re recreational assets this summer and you know the, the constant flow of people, we were worried about um, protecting these resources and uh, taking care of them. So in a very simple way, we wanted to get a message out to say, let's respect our outdoor uh, resources and take care of them and everyone can do their part. So that's what this video is about. And this was um, our billboard campaign that we did. And we postponed it as long as we thought it was safe to you know, do outdoor activities, but we're promoting our recreation and our outdoors with the same family, as you see. We took the back page uh, from Go Local. That was an August edition in the Hershey area and promoted our activities. Um, I was on Good Day PA twice this year, once for, uh, local authors and talking about Lebanon Lily and once for a Lebanon Valley road trip segment that they did. Um, these are some of the ads that we produced for um, promoting the Lebanon Valley. Um, of course, toward Lebanon Valley, uh, we were, we had trepidation. What should we do because of COVID? And um, I'm on the steering committee for this and we met and talked through it. We bumped it back a year or a month. <laughs> and um, ended up with three, 400 people uh, as we did last year. It was amazing. It was a beautiful day. Um, you know, I think Jamie broke some records, but I'm not sure. <laughs> and it was a great testimony to people wanting to do things and seeing the beauty of the Lebanon Valley. Um, we're perfectly positioned to create 
events such as this. You guys did a great job on that. That was a fantastic it, it, job. I mean, it was it was all it was all you know COVID safe. I mean, people I think felt comfortable, even though you think being on a bicycle you know gets you outdoors. You still can and do get close to people. The biggest mistake I made was after 62 miles of riding, you gave me a dilly bar and I accepted an 80. <laughs> my my stomach did not appreciate that in the following. <laughs> Sorry about that. Real, very good event, and I and I think well, um, Nikki gave some stats on how far and wide that drew from, and that was truly a tourism draw. Really well. Oh, a hundred percent. And we we promote as they register um, out of the area. We promote overnights and and restaurants and activities and things to do. So um, it's uh, definitely a cooperative effort, um, but. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a great event and I can't imagine us not having it. Um, the next thing uh, that we, we were delving into in the fall was called Small Town Charm and it was an ad campaign featuring exactly what people were looking for. We, we highlighted four of our small communities, Mount Gretna, Myerstown, Anvil and Jonestown in this ad and just said, you know, when you're slowing your pace down, you appreciate the little things in life um, you know, friendly smiles, and this is part of exploring a small town, and we're just full of uh, all of the small towns and the unique and the charm and the flavor that go along with it. Uh, we think that's a very strong message. And because of that, we added to our website a small town charm page, which has each town, and it's, it's going to have each town. At this point, it has Anvil, and it has Mount Gretna, um, what we do is we, we feature the history and the heritage maps for those towns that you can download uh, from the website. And it talks about all the culture and the, and the history of these buildings throughout the town. It talks about um, an itinerary for the day. Say, I have a day to spend in Anvil. What am I gonna do? Where am I gonna go? Just mm -hmm. some suggestions. And we have a local guest blogger that, that um, is from Anvil and talks about you know, her, her relationship with the city and uh, all the things she enjoys. Um, the whole concept is going to be even larger as we get into one town after the next. So this point, we have two towns. Our next town that we're working on right now is Schaeferstown. And uh, that will be coming out in the next uh, probably two weeks. We'll add that to our website. And then downtown Lebanon will be next. Um, so we really love this concept. And we, we are trying very hard with social media to engage um, the public in um, participating. And yes, you have to go to Whirling Dervish and try the peanut butter balls, you know, because, you know, little specific things like that are what's going to make it stand out and be special. The last campaign for 2020 that we did was called Love It Like a Local. And we, um, we created um, and mostly highlighting our retailers for the holidays. And we have a holiday gift guide that we do every year uh, virtually. And um, what we did is we created these bags and distributed a thousand bags to all our retailers and they loved them. They wanted more. We kept on, <laughs> we said, okay, well, we'll produce more next year, but um, the whole concept was, you know, what if there are four women that want to go away for the weekend or go away for a day and spend it in downtown Lebanon? Our example was, what would you do for the day? And, and to highlight those shops. So this tied in with the CARES Act um, that we ended up um, getting um, some um, money to help from the mask up campaign and created a video uh, that I'm going to show you uh, to help distribute some of that money for, for the businesses that we highlight. And this is about a minute.
there we go. Um, and that was music by Matt Miski. We tried to, um, we, we uh, shared funds with him and for all the businesses that participated. We hired the actresses from Mount Gretna Theater um, and we, we just tried to incorporate as many people as we could in that mission um, to share the fun that you can have when you plan a day and, and just enjoy, enjoy the area. So our occupancy story, um, to, from 2016 to 2019, our income went up over 45%, uh, an increase on hotel occupancy tax. And yes, it helps to have an additional hotel. Yes, it helps to have overflow from other areas, but I think it's all these things working together and actually our mission and the Lebanon Valley growing as it has. Um, and then of course, 2020 hit and um, our, our numbers went way down because nobody was, was staying over at the hotels. And so we actually did uh, with self-imposed cuts and reductions to our budget and uh, applying for every available grant that we could get, um, we were able to salvage a very tough year um, as well as we could. Um, of course, we always wanna do more, but um, I always at the end of the year through the treasurer's office come up with a top 10 list of accommodations. And the stories I'm hearing from this are that uh, number two is from Airbnbs and number eight is from VRBOs. They are both on the rise. They are both paying uh, hotel occupancy tax. And, you know, it's just the wave of the future. This is what we're going to be seeing. And the other story I learned from this is that Twin Grove Campground was the first campground that made the top 10. And that's a lovely facility way north of the county, almost in Pine Grove by Swatara State Park. And uh, they have a very nice facility there. So that was no surprise to me, but camping was bigger than ever. And they said they were sold out most weekends. So <laughs> that was good to see different businesses flourish. Um, we attended the Pennsylvania Tourism Summit uh, from the uh, Department of Tourism uh, statewide. And some of the things that we learned from that um, comforted us in knowing that we are doing exactly what we should be doing. It's embracing your locals as visitors and keeping them entertained in their backyard because people want getaways, staycations and day trips. Um, focus on your communities over destinations and um, we need to educate and entertain people about the Lebanon Valley. And especially the top activities people were interested in were exercising outdoors, being at one with nature, enjoying our outdoor facilities, our parks, our lakes, our mountains, our trails, and exploring small towns and uh, food, wine and beer tours and camping. These were the things across the state that they came up with that people want to do. So I think we've ticked off most of these and I'm working on, on the, um, the uh, culinary tours. So this is my mission for this year and I'm almost done. Um, just to give you a highlight and it's only February, but we're already working with Wellspan and every Wednesday we have a Wellness Wednesday that we highlight um, a healthy activity, either recreation in the Lebanon Valley or a healthy food item that you can purchase in one of our Lebanon Valley restaurants. Today happened to be Three J's uh, coffee highlighted in uh, Palmyra, and they have a baked oatmeal with fresh fruit on top that they highlighted today. So this is a fun activity and this Wellness Wednesday goes on all year long. So um, we're probably going to have uh, lots of fun <laughs> doing that all year. Um, the other program I'd like to start creating this year is called the Lebanon Valley Ambassador Program. And that is with area hotels for their frontline employees and staff to learn about the Lebanon Valley, our attractions, our history, our culture. And, you know, having that Lebanon Valley knowledge, we're hoping will, yes, they're going to go to Hershey Park. That's okay. Let them go to Hershey Park. But could they stay one day longer and do some fun things in the Lebanon Valley? 
these are our engagements. And I spoke with every one of our top hotels and they all are on board with having us come and give this presentation to their staff. Um, we are adding a meetings, conventions, and special events page, of course, featuring the expo and, and a lot of our other um, special event spaces to our website. I'd like to work with our craft breweries and cider um, and have a little trail sometime this fall, hopefully when Lebanon Valley uh, Craft Brewery opens in the, in the summer. Um, there's a motorcycle Harley Davidson convention coming through the expo in May. And I always thought it would be fun to have a trail, uh, Harley Davidson trail that we recommend. I'm not a biker, so I don't know, but um, you know where you should go for the most scenic tour of the Lebanon Valley on your bike and fun Amy places. Amy can help you there. Okay, good. That's right, you can, I forgot about that. Um, and yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on that. Uh, we're going to add all these other towns to our small town charm page and i'm adding a lebanon lily itinerary trail um, just because uh, guadalupe barba from juntas to lebanon said to me you know people don't really know where the cornwall iron furnace is and some people don't know where union canal tunnel is and i'm like i never thought about that i'm so close to it you know um, sometimes you're, you're just way too immersed in a project to see it through other people's eyes. So I felt with that point, it's important to have an itinerary that um, will be easy for people to follow if they'd like to share with their families. And of course, we're going to continue to do Love It Like a Local. Um, in wrap up, our, you know, the intrinsic value of the vacation and getaways will be appreciated more than ever before because we've had travel taken away from us and that, you know, we simply want it back. Um, people are visiting family and friends more than ever before and they have a value of that more than ever before. Um, and re-exploring the grandeur and beauty of the outdoors is valued more than ever before the pandemic. There's a peace and a serenity that comes with nature that you know, I really love uh, that we are set up to do exactly that, be that respite for people. So predictions show and all the, the future forecasting shows that the third quarter of 2021 um, is to be a domestic leisure travel boom. So I certainly hope that's the case. We're keeping our fingers crossed and, uh, and preparing for more business. Um, but of course, this is my favorite view. And um, we did a photo contest this year and this was one of our winners. Um, and it all starts with a visit and the visit is inspired by our marketing. And so we feel that is our job to get that message across and um, our mission to do the best we can with that. So with that, I thank you for your time. Does anybody have any more questions? Jen, I, I have two questions, but yes, I- John. I just want to tell you, your whole, this is such a comprehensive uh, approach to this um, uh, tourism thing that I, I'm just blown away. Uh, the quality of it, the themes, you know, just everything is so awesome. Um, and it's, it's, you're at a whole new level, at least as far as I can tell. So Bill, uh, hats off to you and your committee. Uh, you've been with it for a long time and, and that's just awesome that the outcomes are, are even, you know, no matter what, life throws at you, you, you really uh, adapt and, and uh, make the most of it. And that's, that's really a, a tribute to you in, in difficult times as well as in the good times. Two questions are, if you have a business like Wrinkle and Boone and um, another one that I saw in there, oh, they're scraping the ice cream roll place. Zala's, yeah. If they, if they close, do you, do you edit or just let that ride? And, or... No, 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 we, we've got to get use out of that. So we'll edit that out. And okay. it's like, I have a curse. Every time I, <laughs> I do a video, somebody closes. I'm like, oh, I can't believe it. Um, and it, okay. I cringe when I see it. I'm like, can you believe these people are conspiracy against me? Well, but, I didn't uh, know if it no, was that right. big a deal, but it, it just maybe that's good that you actually can edit that stuff. And the other one is, oh, sure. I should know this, but I don't know. VRBO. What is that? I know the B. Yeah, that was one of my oh, vacation rental by owner. <laughs> what? Say it again. It's when people rent their house out. 
it's it's like the the uh, Airbnb. It's a, it's another it's another franchise. So I have wow. to tell you, Airbnb got its name. Do you all know how Airbnb got its name? Two college boys had an air mattress, and they blew it up, and they had friends stay over at their house, and that's how they started it. Now they're laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> wow. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Sure, go ahead. Uh, were you finished? Was that what you? Yes. That was your no, that was it. The, I just had those two questions in common. Okay. I, I have a question too, and then then I have a comment. Uh, the question is, Jen, with Airbnb being that high on the list, and you're working on this ambassador program, I know it would be, it's probably going to be convoluted and difficult. But is uh, do you have any uh, way that you're going to reach out to these Airbnb uh, folks that are actually renting their properties? It's very difficult. And I've been working with um, Tina in the treasury's office um, to find a way that I can communicate with them, the people that are actually paying and the people that are, are being part of this program um, so that I can relate to them. I did have a gentleman come in um, who has an Airbnb in Lebanon. And I said, please come in and let's sit down and talk. You need to know everything we're doing so that, that you're well equipped when people you know, come into the area. So my mission for this Lebanon Valley ambassador is to really have it grow exponentially throughout a year and have next year, have it open at the expo maybe that people can come in and then talk after the meeting um, and then open it up to, to all these people. But it's going to take some time to build trust, number one, and to um, really engage and try to find avenues to everyone because the way we get paid is through one check. They don't always itemize who's paying from right. the Airbnb and the uh, VRBOs. Okay, and, and, and then my comment, uh, Jen, uh, you and I are aware of something that I think perhaps the other two commissioners may not be. And that is that the uh, Visit Lebanon Valley is in early stages of planning uh, uh, an actual visitor center that they will uh, own. And uh, we have preliminary plans and nothing's been let out public yet, but we have preliminary plans for a visitor center at located at the Expo Center. So I think that's really, really exciting. And I wanted the other two commissioners to know that we're working on that, so. Wow. That will be amazing. Yes, Joel. Yes, I had three questions. Uh, Commissioner Phillips took care of one for me on the um, VRBOs, but the other one other question is, or comment, I guess, really, the Lebanon Valley Ambassador Program sounds extremely promising. That is something um, I thought was missing. I know I remember going on a trip and I want to say it was to Australia and um, you got in a taxi they started telling you the whole history it was like you're your personal tour guide as you're going down the road this is this this is that you could plan your itinerary by listening to these people and the same at the hotel and everywhere and so uh, kudos on the ambassador program I think that is something that will set us apart from other um, tourist bureaus in the area. And the second comment is, I was wondering, um, I have not been on the website and while you're doing all these things, I guess I feel like maybe the communication could be a little better. Um, do you have links to all of the videos and PDFs that you just showed us on your website on one page? No, 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 no. Uh, no, you, you can see our website has several different categories and in each category, there are things under that category. So they're all appropriately categorized, I guess is the best way I could describe that. But yeah, you should have some fun and, and go in there and start digging around. <laughs> well, I guess as you release these, uh, my suggestion is if you want to share them by email with the commissioners, I know I would help you promote them. Excellent. Um, and um, I saw one that I'm going to be uh, speaking at a conference. Of course, it's virtual. 
but it's sold out. They aren't taking anymore. It's statewide. Um, I want to, I'm not sure if the um, Pennsylvania Organization of Watersheds and Rivers is the host or not. I have to go back and look. And then another one uh, at a college. And so um, they really are paying attention to the um, product we created working with um, the Audubon Society last year. And, and I saw your one video as to that. And they asked me if I had anything I wanted to share. Well, um, the video is too long that was produced, but it's, it's excellent. But yours is like a half a minute. And I especially would like that URL because I think that would be a great promo piece uh, to show how it's being utilized after that document was created uh, to show the value of outdoor recreation and protecting our natural resources. Could you see that I get that, please? I will indeed. I will indeed. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, tourism. I'm pardon? sorry. Sustainable I, tourism is something that we're very in, in, engaged with. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think what you're doing is great, but as a commissioner on, I had to wait till today to find out. So I'm thinking, gee, I wish we could get those links as they're released and we could A, be aware of it and B, help promote it for you. Okay. So I just, I just share that and I might be the only one that feels that way, but I would really like to help you. Thank you. You're always, always willing to help. Thank, Thank you. you. Just for the record, I'd like to help too. <laughs> okay. Good to know. I thought I've been helping. <laughs> well, that's why you don't have to offer more, Bill. You have been helping. <laughs> You're there. You're already there. Oh. All right. Well, that's awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Great update. And uh, Jamie, do you have anything to announce uh, after you unmute yourself? Sorry, I'm still juggling this other one in the background here. It's going on a lot longer than I thought this other um, Zoom. I, I don't know that I have anything to announce unless you're thinking of something I should be announcing, I guess. No, I, you just mentioned something to me on the way in and I, I didn't know if that was... Um, just that, I mean, there's, there's interest from, I think growing interest from uh, regional media about whether or not there are going to be any vaccination pods, if that's maybe what you mean. And, and oh, I, I was thinking of any any additional funding or anything that might. Oh, be. yeah, I can do that, too. But uh, yeah, that might be valuable. Jen probably already knows about it. But anyway, the, the vaccine, pods, we, <laughs> we do have an emergency, uh, our emergency services department working on that. And um, some of the details, I think, are a little bit uh, too early to, to reveal. But, um, you know, as Lebanon Countyans see in the news that Lancaster County and some others are talking about these things, you know, the question is, what about us? And the answer is, we will too. Uh, so, so um, you know, it's just these things are all happening in parallel, um, you know, finding a location, loca uh, uh, negotiating space, um, working with the multiple providers, vaccine providers in the area, it's not just one. All of that is taking time, but it's they're doing well at it as emergency services always does. So, um, you know, that'll, that'll happen in time. Um, but uh, Commissioner Phillips, I think what you're referring is, yeah, this is just re very recent news here. The governor uh, just announced through DCED that this funding, it's called the CHIRP grant program, which is a hospitality, COVID hospitality uh, revitalization. Uh, they're providing $145 million in a mixture of state and federal funding to help the hospitality industry in each county. Um, it's a program that is uh, going to be administered um, locally and, and either through uh, an EDC or through uh, a um, C uh, CFDI, I think it's, it's referred to a financial institution. And um, London County is stands to get $1.6 million in this funding. I don't yet know, this is only a day or two old, really. I don't yet know what those grants are going to look like, what kinds of amounts, what's going to be required. Uh, Jen, maybe your association and your industry has been talking about it. I think it was, Pat, legislation was passed late last week. And um, again, we, we got noticed this morning that we literally have a, a business day to apply for it. So yeah. I took care of that today. Um, the funds will flow by the end of February, and in the meantime, we'll 
have to sort out how that's going to get, to get delivered and, and read up on some of the details. But uh, you know, that's a much needed program, I believe. Yeah, I'd love to share that information once, um, you know, once I get your approval on that, Jamie, when the time's right, you tell me, and I will share that with the industry as well for the Lebanon Valley. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you the link that I got at least for the, um, the guidelines, you know, to it. And um, I didn't even, I printed them out. I, I first read the guidelines for the, uh, for the, uh, application because that was urgent but um i'll send you the guidelines as far as the grants go and see if you can look into those details great well certainly refreshing to have a, a very positive report on uh what's going on in your world and um you know we've had a couple of rough weeks here and that's certainly a, a nice uh, a nice look at uh, something that's so vital to our uh, economy and just uh you know our sense of um, pride so uh, you're really, you're, you're checking all the boxes for me. So thank you. Good. I'd be happy to do this quarterly so it's not all jammed in one year. Um, if, if you would prefer that, I could do that on a more regular basis, if you'd like. Sure, you could just, you could just do what you did here. Just email me and we'll set you into the agenda. And... Okay. And that way it's more timely, you know, if you want to use the things like you said, Joellen. Yeah, I, I like I said, I, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know all this was going on this year and we could have been helping you promote it all along. Great. Hey, anything else uh, from anyone? That, any other comments? If not, Jen. Thank, oh, thank keep, you, Jen. <laughs> keep it up. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate it. One attendee, but I don't see any raised hands. So, um... oh. With that, um, Fishers, you have anything, uh, any questions, anything for me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to oh. mention our news release that you just sent out? Uh, yeah, that would have gone out to the uh, all the news uh, outlets in the area, TV, radio, print, so on. Um, it was a statement on the uh, on the most recent Duncan case charged by the district attorney's office and. Uh, you can go ahead and put that up on the on the website as well in case anybody it, wants to is it on the website or you're going it, to put it, it on it's not yet we just sent okay. it out here a minute ago and but we can get that up there sure because i had some uh some mails today so i'm yeah. sure i'm sure yeah <laughs> yeah gotten a lot of them <laughs> yeah. okay all right all right thank you thanks everybody thank, thank you. you bye